Welcome to another unit in the ISM Core Statistics 2. In this unit we are going to talk about how we can compare means and perform the corresponding tests for this. That's either the Gauss test or the so-called t-test. And well, here, similar to what we did with the confidence intervals, we work with two different approaches because we consider first the situation where we already know something about the variance or the standard deviation and then we consider the situation where we don't know anything and have to calculate the corresponding corrected variance or corrected standard deviation based on our data set. And well they're pretty simple or similar because well we could even use the approach we learned about in um, the section on confidence intervals to perform our tests if we just calculate the, uh, the correct confidence interval and then take a look whether the value we need as a comparison actually lies within this interval or not. That's one approach to go about this. Here we're going to take a look how this works. If we use the same approach to testing as we use in the other parts, so basically speaking, if we always work with test and reference statistic and compare both of these statistics. So how are we going to go about this? Well, we start with considering the Gauss test. That's again, we assume we have a normally distributed population and we know our variance or the corresponding standard deviation. If we just have a large sample, we could calculate our corrected um, variance and then do the same test again. But this only works for large samples, so at least 30 better, even more observations. Then first we get here an approach for two-sided tests. And if we recall, I said earlier that's similar to the confidence intervals. And with confidence intervals, we also had two-sided intervals, one-sided intervals. So the difference here, well, I just show the hypothesis for the two-sided test. Two-sided with test means equal to H0 versus unequal H1. If we were to do one-sided tests, so we're interested only in greater or lesser, we would have an H0 of lesser or equal to, or correspondingly greater or equal to, and a corresponding H0, uh, H1, greater or lesser than. So the equality case is always part of the H0 hypothesis. Here, however, we are only considering the two-sided version equal, unequal. The testing value for which we actually test here, that's the mu0. So that's our hypothesis. And again, we work basically with getting a testing value, test statistic, and a reference statistic. The test statistic looks a little bit familiar. Familiar if we compare this with how we standardized normally distributed random variables. So we go, take our testing value, that's here, uh, not testing, the x value, which is here, the arithmetic mean subtract the testing value, that's the mu0, and all of this is divided by the standard deviation. The only difference here, we multiply this with the square root of the number of observations. Else it's pretty familiar with regards to the standardized value. And well, we have to do this, let's call the standardization procedure, because this value is then compared to the reference value and the reference statistic here is z1 minus 1 half alpha. And this we get again from the distribution, from the percentiles of the standard normal distribution. So we again have to work with the standard normal distribution. That's why we had to more or less standardize this above. So for example, if we have um, an alpha of 5%, this means we have to look up 0 uh, Z1 minus 0 0.55 alpha or Z0.975. There we would find the value 
Okay, so far so good. So this gives us the reference statistic. Then for the decision, we simply compare test and reference statistic. If the test statistic, absolutely speaking, is smaller than the reference statistic, then we have to retain H0, else, meaning if it's larger, H0 is rejected. In other words, there's a difference between the arithmetic mean and the testing value. If the test statistic is larger, there's no significant difference if the reference statistic is larger. Okay, let's illustrate this with an example. So here in the example, we have the task, first the description. Each year a study is conducted about the income of students in German universities. The previous year an average income of 420 euros has been determined. This year 961 students took part in the study. The average this year has been 425 euros. From the previous years it is known that the standard deviation is at 25 euros. Our task now? Test one acceptable margin of error of 5% if this year's result deviates from last year's result. Okay, for this we just summarize all the information we have. We start this example first with the summary, which was an arithmetic mean, this year's result, 425 euros. Testing value, so large last year's result, 420 euros. Standard deviation, 25 euros. Number of observation, 600, uh, 961 and an alpha of 5%. And well, if we have all of this, we can just plug this into our formula for the test statistic. So here we get a test statistic of 6.2. It's the arithmetic mean 425 minus testing value 420 divided by our standard deviation of 25 and multiplied with the square root of the number of observations. Okay, we have the test statistic. Next part, the reference statistic. Here we have to do a two-sided test as well, because it just says deviates, so it could be smaller or larger. We have one minus one half alpha, so again, Z 0 0.975. So we turn to this table, 0 0.975 gives us here reference statistic of 1.96. We copy this. Now we just compare test and reference statistic for a decision. And here we see our test statistic is larger, 6.2, larger than 1.96. This means our H0 hypothesis can be rejected. In other words, both values are significantly different. This year's value, this year's average income deviates from last year's income. Okay, so that's basically our result for this exercise. So let's consider the second possibility. What about the situation if our standard deviation or variance is not given or our sample is just too small or and our sample is just too small? Well, in this case, we use a t-test. The t-test, again, we have more or less the same hypothesis at least if it's a two-sided test. And even our test statistics looks slightly familiar. The only difference being, instead of the st um, standard deviation we had before, so the sigma, we divide by the corrected standard deviation, which is here, s. This gives us our testing value as t empirical. The corresponding reference statistic, however, we have to look up in the corresponding table for the t distribution, because here we have t n minus 1, that's the degrees of freedom, then 1 minus 1 half alpha. So the second part is the same as with the Gauss test. However, here we have degrees of freedom as well. So we just take a look at this table for the t distribution. We have left in the different rows the degrees of freedom and in a column the alpha or rather 1 minus alpha values. So here, for example, if we have six observations, we have five degrees of freedom. If we have an alpha of 5%, we have one minus one half alpha, so 
0.75. This would turn out for us to have a reference statistic of 2.5706. Okay, testing decision then, similar to what we did before. If the test statistic is smaller than the reference statistic, we retain H0, so not different. If the test statistic is larger, we reject H0, there is a difference. Well, we could do the same thing again for our exercise, for our example. In the example, same test as before. The only difference here, we just have the data set yields a corrected standard deviation of 25 euros. So it's more or less the same idea. The only problem here, we would have to use the original data set to calculate this corrected standard deviation. Task is still the same, test from acceptable margin of error, 5% if this year's result deviates from last year's result. Again, we just summarize our values. So it's basically the same. However, with our test statistic, well, we get the same value. However, it's called T empiric. The only difference happens now with the reference statistic. Here we ask about t n minus 1. n is 961, so we get 960 degrees of freedom. Then we have 1 minus 1 half alpha, so we have 0 0.975. So we have to look up this value in the table. Well, this table does not have uh, 960 degrees of freedom. We have 1 for 500 and 1 for, five, uh, for 1000. So we have two possibilities here. Either we could round this up to the next value, which would here be 1000 degrees of freedom. Then we would get here a value, a reference statistic of 1.9623. Or if we go with a more, um, let's call this, more secure way, more uh, more risk averse way, we would always round down to the next smallest available value. So here this would be 500. Well, this wouldn't really be so different because we would have 1.9647. So yeah, there would be a difference, but only on the third decimal. So no big deal here. But if we have a very critical result, rounding down would always assure that we actually assure that the result is really stable and not a chance of us just rounding up. Well, here we work with the normally rounded version with 1.9623. And well, then for the decision, we have to compare this with the test statistic. Well, here the 6.2, that's larger than the 1.9623. This would also have been larger than any of the other values. So this is no critical decision. So we're pretty sure that the test statistic in this case is always larger. So in either case, we can reject the H0 hypothesis and assume that both values are significantly different. There is always, or there's in this case, a difference between the income today and the income last year of the students. Well, we can also see something else. And that's, well, while the test statistic more or less stays the same, our decision becomes a bit more critical because the reference statistic in this case is a bit larger. And that's always the case. Independent of how much observations I have, the reference statistic in the case where we first have to estimate the um, standard deviation by the corrected standard deviation, the reference statistic will always be a bit larger. We'll also see that the standard deviation, the estimated standard deviation, will always push the test statistic downwards because usually the corrected standard deviation is a bit larger than the actual standard deviation. So we would get in real cases usually a 
smaller test statistic, a large, uh, slightly larger reference statistic, making this test more or less go into the direction of retaining H0. So more or less assuming there to not be a difference. So the values to be more similar. But this is, well, usually only very small differences. And as we see here, the general idea more or less stays the same. So only if you have a very critical situation could this turn out to be a real problem. And well, that's then all there is to this example, to this unit. So I hope you enjoyed listening to it. And if you're looking for additional units, feel free to visit the rest of the course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.